You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what is going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we are going to be previewing Kentucky basketball's matchup with the Florida Gators. Tristan Ferris, the one and only, is going to be joining us to talk about this matchup. Colin Castleton will not be playing in this game. I'm going to talk to Ferris about what we think about Oscar Shibwe in this matchup, how maybe Kentucky wants to attack things offensively. Where does Kentucky, or excuse me, Florida turn offensively? Uh, in this game. Also going to be talking a little bit about the SEC tournament, the NCAA tournament, going to get somebody else's perspective on the Wildcats final stretch and what could happen for them both in Nashville and in March Madness. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. I want to remind everybody out there that we are free and available on all platforms. And if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the show. If you're listening on podcasts, you can follow us on Twitter at Locked On UK. You can also follow me on Twitter at Lance Daw underscore if you would like. So let's go ahead and get into it. Without further ado, here's our conversation with Tristan Ferris. We are now excited to be joined by Tristan Ferris, writer for Kentucky Insider and a Sea of Blue, back again to help us preview another Kentucky Wildcats matchup. Tristan, this week we've got Kentucky versus Florida. Last time you and I talked, the Wildcats were facing off against Mississippi State in what was considered a must-win game. Wildcats won that one, and since then, they've taken down a top-15 team in Tennessee Heading into this game, I thought that there would maybe be some concerns with how Kentucky may face off against Colin Castleton, the star center for the Gators, but it does not look like he's going to be playing in this matchup due to an injury. So heading into this game, I think all of a sudden things look, I would say, very different for the Wildcats and how they may approach this game with Oscar Shibwe. Can we start things off here, though, Tristan, by kind of talking about what maybe the Gators want to do with their front court rotation against Shibwe? Yeah, so without Colin Castleton, um, this this Florida team is a completely different team. I mean, he was the most versatile weapon they had on offense and defense. He was just kind of the center point of the whole team. Um, it's kind of late at this point to change what they're doing dramatically, so they're going to do a lot of the same stuff. I would look at um, Jason Jatobo and Alex Shim. I believe if I'm saying that correct. He's from Germany. Kind of has a weird last name, but um, it's only been one game, but there's obviously been a large drop-off between those two. I think they combined for 12 points, eight rebounds against Arkansas, um, with most of that production coming from uh, Shimchik. Uh, but I believe those are going to be the two uh, front court players that Oscar's going to be battling. And fortunately for him, I think you could see a vintage uh, Oscar Shibley style game on, on Saturday or Wednesday. You talk about those two guys in the front court, uh, Jason Jatobo being one of them, had a career-high 24 minutes, only took five shots and was two of five from the floor and had four points, two turnovers, two personal fouls. Not what you want out of your uh, your front court production, especially like you mentioned, heading into a game like this where you've got one of the most efficient players in the country uh, on the other side in Oscar Shibwe. Shibwe in that matchup against Castleton was two of 14 this previous go around, do we expect maybe Shibwe to be, like I mentioned, a little bit more efficient offensively in this game? And should we see maybe some better things defensively despite what he's done so far this season? Yeah, so in that first matchup, I mean, Oscar had some good looks. He, he should have scored more than four points. I kind of just think he was in a mental lull at that point. I think he went two or three games straight scoring and, and single digits. So I believe he was just kind of going through it at, at that uh, point. But without Castleton, without that length, Obviously, Florida still has some size, but um, they're not as good defenders as Castleton was, so I do expect um, Oscar to have a, a better game, especially offensively. But if you kind of just look at that um, the Florida front court, just take a step back, they also just don't rebound the ball well. They lost rebounding battles with Castleton in the lineup. Um, and, I mean, Oscar had 15 rebounds in their first matchup, so I expect him to, to, to get something similar tomorrow night. Um, but I, I just kind of think defensively, uh, he's he's been better the last few games, so I expect to see um, Florida to attack that attack him on the pick and roll. But I also expect him to respond well. They've been kind of doing some different things schematically, pulling him out to the paint, so they uh, can't attack him as much, allowing Jacob Toppin, Chris Livingston to kind of switch on those picks. 
So I believe um, Oscar is definitely going to have a better second showing against Florida. I think this this Florida team stylistically is really interesting to look at compared to where they were underneath Mike White. I think something that we talked about with Mississippi State and was a point of emphasis in, in my breakdown mostly was their pace of play. You look at Florida last year, they were one of the slower teams in the SEC, one of the slower teams in the country actually uh, in terms of average possession length and adjusted tempo. I get most of my numbers from Kim Palm, so I'm basing a, this, uh, this conversation off of this here. The adjusted tempo for the Gators this year is top 80. And so I think you're starting to see a bit of a stylistic change uh, for Todd Golden, the new head coach there with Florida. Do we maybe see some of Florida's perimeter scorers get involved in transition against the Wildcats? Obviously, we saw Mississippi State run on, uh, uh, excuse me, Kentucky quite a bit. Do we maybe see Florida try and push things a little bit and try and create some offense now that Castleton's not playing? Yeah, that's definitely not surprising. I would expect to see uh, two Florida backcourt players, Riley Kugel and Kyle Lofton. Um, I think they combined for almost 30 against Arkansas, so I believe um, they're the two to watch for tomorrow night. They they like to get down court. Um, if Kyle Lofton can start making threes and Kugel too, um, that would make them more dynamic. But the, I mean, the primary way they've been scoring is, is getting out in transition, getting down the floor, um, and getting looks to the basket in that, in that screening offense uh, short in the clock. All right, before we continue along here with our conversation with the one and only Tristan Ferris, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all of the fat and calories, then you have got to try Built Bar. The thing about Built Bar is that they are really, really good for you. They taste like candy bars, though. They're covered in 100% real chocolate, and they have unbelievably great flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie. If you've listened to this show for any amount of time, you know that my favorite flavors are salted caramel and cookies and cream. I think Built Bars are absolutely phenomenal whenever you want to try and maybe get in a snack pre or post workout. Very, very good for you. Great macros, 130 calories, four grams of sugar, but 17 grams of protein. And you used to be able to order these things off of Built.com, but now you no longer need to wait around to get a box. You can go to Walmart or Sam's Club to pick up a 4 or 13 bar box of these amazing Built Bars. And if you check them out, I guarantee you, you will absolutely love them. You can thank me later. It's going to be really interesting to see how Florida tries to attack Kentucky again. Like we both mentioned, we expect a lot more pace in this one. Uh, and a lot more shooting, but compared to last game, I mean, this was a game that Kentucky kind of took over uh, in terms of pace. They had 51 shots as opposed to Florida's 36. Uh, Heading into this matchup, you've got a couple of Kentucky guards that were really, really solid uh, in this matchup, and C.J. Frederick and Cason Wallace. Frederick, his status still in question for this one. Severe Wheeler also still suffering an injury as well. Do we have any more information as to where those two players may be heading into this one? Um, on his call-in show last night, Cal Terry did give the latest update, if that's what you want to call it, just that those two guys are working as hard as they can to get back to the floor. Um, I mean, there have been some rumors out there that they don't want to return. I don't believe that. I don't buy that. Um, looking at the bench, the way Sri Wheeler and C.J. Frederick uh, reacted and, and were energized on Saturday in the in the win against Tennessee, I, I believe they're still a part of this team. Um, Casey Wallace has mentioned he's still lean, leaning on Severe Wheeler. Um, to help learn and help develop as a point guard, and I think you've seen that here in the last few games. So it would be nice to get those players back soon, um, and I believe they are working to get back before the end of the season. Case and Wallace, like you mentioned, they're a big part of Kentucky's win against Florida. Last go around, had 20 points, was 6 of 9 from 2, 1 of 1 from 3, uh, made all his free throws, had a couple of blocks, had a couple of steals, had a couple of assists, just all around a very solid performance for number 22. What should we expect out of Kentucky's lineup and their rotation in this game? Do we maybe see somebody outside of Sheetway become a little bit more of a consistent score? We know Antonio Reeves has been somebody that's been on a tear as of late. Do we maybe see not necessarily the same players pop off again, but maybe it's a little bit more balanced this go-around? I would expect so. Um, I mean, Kentucky's lineup is kind of limited right now, especially if Weaver and Frederick out. You really got five guys playing 30-plus minutes a game. I think when I looked at the box score on Saturday, they had four guys playing 34, and I believe Jason Wallace played all but 30 seconds. So um, it's been – those guys are definitely getting their playing time. And they're all, in the last few games, they've all been playing well. They show what they can do. Obviously, we have Chris Livingston, who just had his first double-double. 
Um, Oscar scored 15 in three straight games. Jacob Toppin scored in double digits. So I believe all five of those guys are finding their groove and they're becoming more balanced on the offensive end. And I believe that was a big reason against Tennessee. You've seen them fight the basket, be more aggressive, but it was also just more than one person um, doing so. Something that I did not prepare to talk to you about, Tristan, but is is starting to just kind of come up over these past few games is I think the Wildcats have been doing a much better job of not necessarily knocking down their free throws at a higher clip, but certainly getting to the line more often. In this game, uh, previously against Florida, I didn't really see a whole lot of trips to the line. Could we possibly see down the stretch Kentucky – angle their offense toward that, maybe trying to draw more fouls as we get closer and closer to the SEC tournament. Is that something that you may say? Well, I think for the whole game, I mean, I believe when I looked at it, Florida gave up 52 points in the paint to Arkansas, um, and they're 80 points. So they're not the defensive team in the paint that they had been with Castleton. Um, You've seen, uh, like I mentioned, Kentucky just be aggressive getting to the basket against Tennessee. I believe you'll see more of the same. They shot 35 free throws on Saturday. They only made 23, um, which is concerning a little bit. You, you'd like to be um, in that 70 to 75% made range. But I believe a, a part of that is also just guys are tired at the end of the game. Um, but they have to learn how to make those free throws. I know Livingston and Reeves combined four for 11. Um, that's not Those are your two best free throw shooters, so that's not ideal. But I don't believe that's a consistent trend. But it is, it is definitely promising seeing Kentucky get um, – a, a bulk of their offense from the free throw line here down the stretch, and I believe you'll see that going forward. You mentioned the short rotation. We mentioned the pace in this game, Colin Castleton being out, a lot of different interesting factors that are going to decide this one for the Wildcats. What do you think, Tristan, will be the biggest deciding factor in this game? It could be a matchup. It could be an individual statistic. What do you think is going to be the biggest thing here? Just looking at the game from a larger picture, I'm pretty confident that Kentucky uh, has the edge. I believe they will win. But this is a must-win for Florida. Um, they're off, they played themselves off the bubble. They only have three or four games left, I believe, and Kentucky's probably their best quality opponent. So for them to have a dream of making this NCAA tournament, they have to win. Um, obviously, the rebound battle is going to be important, just giving um, Kentucky just getting extra possessions and limiting uh, Florida to just one possession. But I believe for Kentucky, the biggest uh, – thing they need to focus on is just their, to improve on their ball screen defense and, and defensive communication. Uh, Florida, they love the ball screen offensive action. I believe they're one of the um, premier SEC teams and the uh, amount of ball screens they run expect a lot of dribble handoffs. Um, and that's just Kentucky. They're going to have to communicate. They're going to have to switch um, well, and they're going to have to defend well throughout um, because Florida, if you don't take them seriously, they're – uh, capable of beating me. All right, before we wrap up our conversation with Tristan Ferris, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at LinkedIn. As a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. It's incredibly easy to create a free job post. You can add your job to the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. They've got simple tools like screening questions to make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's really simple. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. You can post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Florida, Kentucky battling it out at 7 PM Eastern on ESPN should be a fun game with Colin Castleton out. I expect Kentucky to probably handle business in this one, but there are a lot of reasons why uh, the Gators may keep this one close primarily because uh, the fact that this one's on the road uh, for the Gators. And like you said, their backs are against the wall at this point in the season. I want to switch things over here, Tristan, to kind of talking about the SEC and the NCAA tournament because I think it's very interesting how things could play out for the Wildcats in both tournaments respectively. So as you mentioned, four more games for the Wildcats this season, Florida on the road, Auburn and Vanderbilt at home, and then you finish up the regular season with a road trip 
to Arkansas. Best case scenario, you went out and you end up finding yourself maybe as the third seed in the SEC tournament, depending on what Tennessee does. Kind of take me through your process as to how you think this season will end for the Wildcats heading into Nashville for, before we get into anything else. I think the most realistic scenario um, is Kentucky going 3-1. and one, I believe you, you're going to be favored against Florida, Auburn, and Vanderbilt. Um, but I believe that Arkansas game, that's a, even if you're top 10 ranked, you go into that type of atmosphere the last game of the regular season. Um, with that athleticism and those athletes, it's just going to be a hard hard game to win uh, either way. I'm not saying that to rule Kentucky out, but I believe if you're just looking at it from the perspective we are now, I would expect that to be a loss. Um, but even going 3-1, and one, uh, like you mentioned, Kentucky is going to be uh, probably the three seed in the SEC tournament. That probably gives them the side of the bracket with A&M as long as they can keep up so they don't have to play um, Alabama or Tennessee to get to that final round. So I believe if you can go 3-1 and one and, and reach the finals of the SEC tournament, you could be looking at a six or seven seed in the NCAA tournament, um, which probably isn't as significant as it is most seasons just because of how wide open the field is. But um, given where they were just a few weeks ago, uh, just – I mean, a, lot, a week ago, people didn't think they were going to make the tournament. That would be a pretty impressive turnaround. It would be a, a very impressive turnaround for the Wildcats if they're able to climb that high. The reason I think this is interesting is because as of right now, Tennessee could potentially finish 12-6. and six, And the Wildcats, like you just mentioned, if they go 3-1, and one, then they would be 12-6 and six as well. So the, the Auburn game for me is becoming more and more interesting just simply because analytics say it's one of the more balanced games that Kentucky has left on their schedule. It's a 50-50 matchup pretty much everywhere you look or somewhere close to it. Auburn right now trying to find their way back into contention for that fourth spot in the uh, in the SEC tournament. If the Wildcats do end up going 3-1, and one, though, they'll need Auburn to actually win against Tennessee or at least Tennessee to lose to somebody here over this final four-game stretch, A&M, South Carolina, Arkansas, and Auburn is Tennessee's final stretch of the regular season. Auburn, the most likely chance to beat the Vols, according to Ken Palm. I think that it's really, again, like you said, interesting how things could end up being seeding-wise because you don't want to play Alabama right out the gate. If you're a four-seed in the SEC tournament, you're going to end up playing the Crimson Tide if you win your first game. Playing Tennessee is less of a concern for me. Or Texas A&M, I think Kentucky can match up much better uh, with one of those two squads if they were able to face off against them in the quarterfinals. But I'm excited about what this Kentucky team could do in this postseason. And then like you mentioned, uh, Kentucky has the ability to really climb the rankings here. As of right now, they are 33rd in the net uh, after being 35th uh, just a couple of days ago. They've kind of bounced back and forth now back up to number 33. 4-7 against quad one opponents. You've got so many quad one opportunities here, Tristan, before you head out to March Madness that the sky kind of feels like the limit uh, for this Wildcats team in terms of momentum. But you said there that I, that the NCAA tournament is wide open, and I completely agree with you. I do think, though, if you end up getting, if you end up getting a um, Sorry, I'm getting an extra phone call here. If you end up getting a seven seed as opposed to a six, you're then facing off against these two seeds. And I, looking at this potential bracket, Tristan, I'm not so confident for the Wildcats in their matchup against most of these one or two seeds. You get down to these three seeds, I mean, it's a little bit of a concern as well. Do you think that because this field is so open, Kentucky could just simply make a run based off of momentum? I believe so. Um, I believe the only team that are that is playing as well as they can right now, which they've actually got some turmoil today, is, is Alabama. I believe Houston's up there, but they play in uh, an inferior conference, but they're not uh, playing to their competitive level on a, on a nightly basis. So I believe there's not one team that Kentucky's not capable of beating, but I don't believe there's another team that they're not capable of losing to either. So it's kind of what I've said the last few weeks, Kentucky's season is what they want to make of it. They have the talent um, to to get, like a, like you had mentioned, a six or seven seed. Ideally, you don't want to play uh, a two seed. Um, you'd rather play one of those three seeds. I think the last time I had looked, that kind of gives you the the Iowa State of the world. Um, so not as too daunting um, in those matchups. But I kind of just 
John Kyle Perry's alluded to this in the past. You you take what you're given. Uh, they've had some difficult roads in the past. You've seen them in 2014, make them all the way to the finals on three straight buzzer beaters. I don't expect that to happen this year. I, I kind of think the feeling of this team is a Sweet 16 team. But you never know, just like you said, given how wide open the field is. Right now, according to the latest bracketology from Joe Lenardi at ESPN, Purdue, Kansas, Alabama, and Houston are the number one seeds. Arizona, Baylor, UCLA, and Texas are the two seeds. And then you've got Tennessee, Iowa State, like you mentioned there, Kansas State, and Virginia as the three seeds. According to Joe Lenardi, Kentucky is currently an eight seed. Uh, they've risen up the rankings there. So we'll see what happens. It's, it's, it's all very interesting the way that the draw could play out, at least in my mind. I'm very excited to see how the Wildcats could continue to capitalize on their momentum with such a short bench, bench to be honest with you, Tristan. Uh, I'm really, really interested in how this could play out. A question here to you before we head out. There's been a comp out there, a comparison for Kentucky and how they're starting to finish this season. Last year, North Carolina went on somewhat of a similar run in terms of where Kentucky was at before that Tennessee game and the net and all these different rankings. It was very similar, actually, to where North Carolina was before they started to get hot. Is that a comparison that you agree with, or do you think the Wildcats are their own thing? I kind of believe the Wildcats are their own thing. I mean, honestly, if you look at analytics and records and stuff, they, they match up similar, similarly. But I don't believe the the roster makeup is the same. Um, if you look at Brady Manick, he was a stretch four. Jacob Toppin loves that mid range jumper, but he's not he's not your Brady Manick. Um, you have Caleb Love, who's um, hot or not, he's one of the most efficient or inefficient players in the in the country, depending on the day. So I don't believe you have a player like that. You got a very mature guard in Kaysen Wallace in that place. Um, and then you also got some talented freshmen that North Carolina didn't have. Talking about Chris Livingston and obviously Kaysen Wallace. So I believe they're their own thing. Yeah, they're in the same position that Carolina was in last year, but they're also just a different team. Um, and I believe the the just the kind of the state of college basketball, the way teams have played this year, I believe that's also uh, going to play a factor in that. Just everything's different. Um, so, like I had mentioned, it, it could be a Sweet 16 ride. It could be even an Elite 8 ride. It's whatever they want to make of it. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Tristan, I really appreciate you coming on again to help us preview another game. Tell everybody where they can find your content and your Twitter, man. Yes, sir. I appreciate you having me on again. I like doing these. Um, but yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Tristan, um, UDA, Tristan, Uda, um, Kentucky Insider, and a Sea of Blue. And I appreciate you, uh, and I'll be glad to come on at any time. Absolutely. Links again to Tristan stuff in the description below. Make sure you check him out, his writing, and his Twitter. He's been popping off on the Twitter scene as of late. I want to make sure that you stay up to date with everything going on with Kentucky basketball over at Tristan's Twitter. Again, uh, Tristan, one more time, really appreciate you hopping on, man. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right. That was our conversation with Tristan Ferris of Kentucky Insider and Asia Blue. Again, if you want to check out Tristan's stuff, and I would highly encourage you to do so, at least give him a follow on Twitter uh, to keep up to date with what's going on in the Kentucky sphere. Uh, links to his work and his Twitter will be in the description Below. And that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore. And you can follow the show over on Instagram. That is at Kentucky Podcast. Questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the YouTube comments. Hit me on the socials. I will see you all tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Kentucky. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day and God bless. <laughs>